Hi, and welcome to the Lifestyle Show with me, Pam Joseph. Um, we have been away for a little while and we're back and raring to go and keeping in line with government advice with social distancing, don't you know? I'm broadcasting from my humble abode. Um, now, in these strange times, we obviously uh, have a great deal to talk about and not just in the UK, but covering the impact of COVID-19 um, on our Caribbean islands. We also want to send out positive messages and inspirational news as well to lighten our spirits. So for the next few hours, I, I request that you please stay tuned as you're going to be entertained and informed by myself and my guests. So at this point, I'd like to bring in my um, fellow fellow conspirator, if you will, uh, the Dark Persuader. Anthony Jordan. We're back. We're back. Hi, How are you, Pam? Yes. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Likewise, likewise. Virtual oh hug. God. Virtual hug, as they say. There you are. There you are. And yes. The kisses. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, lifestyle. Oh my God, the excitement, the, the the energy. I can't believe it. This is yeah. this is great. Thank you. Thank Love you to me, and thank that's you to everyone. Fun. Yes. But it's good. It is. If we've never been off air. That's I know. Fun. I know. That's the great bit. That's yeah. the great bit. So, I um, mean, we've, we've got sort of like a real pack show as always, but I mean, we've got a pack show today. We've got some really inspirational, um, you know, uh, guests on our show, but we've also got some, you know, maybe kind of a bit sad news. And I'm going to say the first one because it's going to be on your, uh, the entertainment corner, um, Anthony, the, the sad news that we've heard about a passing. Yes, yes. Oh, what a shock. What a shock. Classic rock. Little Richard gone. That was... I. <laughs> I was blown. I, you, I, I, hands up, honest. It was your text message that alerted me to it. I was like, "What? Who? No, no, no!" It was just such a drop. I, yeah. Um, in this time, I, not to say happy to say, but you know, it wasn't Corona. It was good living, if you would. You know, he had a good run, as they say. And sadly, father time caught up. But yeah. it was, it was still a heartbreak, nonetheless. I was completely yeah. shocked and heartbroken. And rest in peace to a legend of music who. So though the body may not be here, he will last forever. Yeah, most we will be seeing more of that later on, for sure. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And who else um, have you got on the show? Ah, oh, who else? Who else? A lifestyle family member, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Multi-award winner. I'll go through his um, listings later on, but it is Trini Boy Juicy, who's actually I... also got a, a Corona theme song out there. So we'll be hearing a bit of that, talking to him, see what he's been up to. Probably touch on the the event in august that we all look forward to see his yeah. views on it as he is a patron so good yeah. stuff to be coming up there as well yeah, yeah good i also think we should mention because we're, we're in that climate right now about the day and particularly about our you know our own um you know ancestors if you will um that you know definitely were a major part um in the victory of europe uh, as well indeed. yeah indeed indeed do you know it's one of the funny things i think Again, V Day, because we are celebrating that here. But globally, what our ancestors done, it's amazing in the war, what you know, in the wars. That, that so it would be such a brilliant way to pay tribute to them because they've yeah. it's not been recognized as much as it should be. In in you know, history has a way of writing itself sometimes, and it's good when the truth is uncovered and recognition is given. Of course. So I'm looking forward to hearing more of that for sure. Yeah. And just before we came on air, um, let you know, because Anthony, you, you would know this, we've just received this literally as we came on air, that um, the uh, Prime Minister of St Lucia, um, Alan uh, Chastanet, is going to uh, address the nation there uh, to talk about the lockdown that's been happening, obviously, everywhere has got a lockdown. Globally, yeah, 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 it's been huge. Um, yeah, on the island of St Lucia and, and maybe giving out a new direction you know, it's, it's wow. you know. Yeah. And, and if we're lucky we're, we're gonna you know before the this show ends we're going to get a link so if anyone wants to tune in it's going to be later on this evening but if they could you know want to know they could hear at that very time th that um, address to the nation of St Lucia so hopefully before the show ends we can give that information out um we, because we're so packed I, I'm gonna have to really probably see if I can just head straight in because right now we're gonna be going I'm gonna wave you by because I'm going on a sunny island right now can you believe? Um, and hopefully we should, <laughs> <laughs> we should be having um, uh, Glenda and Rick Clark on the sunny island of, of Barbados. And hopefully that will come through. And they're going to be telling us about their experiences, and you know, with their business and, and everything else, the impact of COVID-19 on that island as well. So that will come through very quickly. Then if, if I can quickly have a time, because I'm told that not quite yet. So just quickly let you know what, what's up on the show. 
we have our, our lovely favourite, our I call her the gospel guru, Dunno. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed she is. The one and only again. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the explosion is back. <laughs> so she's going to be on. Um, we also going to be having new faces, new faces uh, to lifestyle. Um, a chap by the name of uh, Julian Hawes, uh, the ultrapreneur, not entrepreneur, Anthony. Ultra. That sounds interesting. That I, sounds I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm tuned in. I'm tuned in for that. It's like it really whacks you, and you say that you know, you know, we've got a poet and author. Um, Tinny Edwards, she's going to be coming up and talking about, you know, what she's doing. And she's very inspirational. She's gone through three um, things. And because of this lockdown, we're talking about mental well-being as well. Interesting. Very to, important. Yeah, very yeah, important. She has to say on that. Uh, we also have um, Patrick Vernon OBE. Um, mm. Now, as we all know, there is a, a particular, um, the, the uh, Office of National Statistics have come out with a recent report to suggest that um, black people, you know, that includes males and females, are four times more likely uh, to die of this dreadful um, disease, coronavirus, um, than our white counterparts. So ooh, he's got a lot of interesting aspects about that to say. And I do know that we could be the first on this. I'm not sure about that, but we've just been told that a campaign letter has just been issued today. This, scores of names and I, mean, I mean real proper names on this they wanting to know let's open this out let's do a wider debate mm. this is addressed for the government to deal with so that is a, is a great thing in itself as well we have understood after 50 years never been stopped what does that mean to you well, this is what I was hinting at with our, our, our boy Trilly Boy Juicy, a bit of the old carnival, the Notting Hill carnival. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, just like wow, but I mean it was kind of inevitable. Right? What did you say? I, I, with so many other celebrations around the world, let's talk World Cup, let's talk Olympics, Wimbledon, Glastonbury, Coachella, it, it kind of felt like it had to come. And heartbreaking though it is, it's for the best. Yeah. Personally speaking, that's my view on it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, try doing it two metres distant there at the carnival. You, you're lucky to get to point, point two centimetres. <laughs> exactly. I wonder what we're talking about. This is a family show. Um, <laughs> listen, listen it, it's a family show, but Notting Hill Carnival can be quite intimate, dare I say. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing at times. My yeah. Well, I don't know what you're doing at Carnival. It's just, you know. <laughs> No, joking aside, it, yeah, it can be. It can Thank be. you. <laughs> and, and, and so we are going to be talking to our favourite carnival, our man in the carnival, and so on. So he's yeah. going to be up and he's going to be talking to us um, a bit about that. It was a hard decision that they had to make, but it was the right decision to make. And let's see what he has to say further on. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, yeah, so then, you know, obviously he's going to have the, the entertainment corner and it's all good and, and it's it's like real... This is this is the impact as we've come back in the lifestyle show 2020. We was always going to come in in spring, but I mean, we never saw this coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it, unforeseen, but we are unstoppable. That's the way to say it. Indeed. indeed. Okay, so I'm hoping that we do have at this moment, um, Glenda and Rick Clark. If I could be um, getting on with them, Glenda and Rick Clark, are you with us? The sunny island of Barbados. Do we have them? Do we not? But maybe not. So let's leave it. Let's leave it. Let's just let's just continue. Let the ball keep rolling. Indeed. Yeah, a little bit of a problematic thing there. Let's 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 move on to then my next guest, and I hope she is there. And I said uh, it's our gospel guru, uh, Annette B. Um, Annette B, are you are you there? Hello. Are you there? No, she's not here as yet. No, right. yet. So sadly, lifestyle viewers, you're stuck with me. <laughs> no, I love it. It's just, it's just, it's just, you know what I mean? I'm down. I'm down. Listen, I'm down. All I know is, is that basically Pam was talking about flying off to Barbados, leaving me here in my room, in my studio on my own. It's fine. Tough. I, hey, Paula, nice to see you. And everyone else has been messaging, by the way. But yeah, I am happy to say I am staying. You can't get rid of me that easy because it's Lifestyle 2020. We're back and the Dark Persuader is doing his thing and he's stuck here. 
not tough. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, right. it's a big one. It's a big one. Yeah. Um, but we also want to tell you know the, the viewers that they can interact because we we can get them to um, do it by various ways. You can email us uh, any comments, whatever lifestyle on Ben, or one word lifestyle on Ben at hotmail.co.uk. Um, Facebook page lifestyle on Ben. Don't forget the likes. Don't forget the likes. And on Twitter at lifestyle TV show. All right. That's the one. But bear in mind, that's for like your, how can I say this? Because some people are watching it here live with us through Media Net Live mm. and you'll be catching it on Ben TV. So those elements are there. But we are live now. So if you head on over to the Media Net Facebook page, you can actually put live comments and we will see them at the bottom of the screen. So if there is a quick interactive question or comment, it's there. We will, we will acknowledge it and take part and feedback as best as we can. Yeah, yeah, this is it. It's all good. And let's talk a bit more about that, actually, when we say um, ben, ben Television, because as this goes out here like this, the following Friday, it, it, it's actually on the Sky platform. Four, yep. five, eight. Yeah. Okay, four, five, eight. Nice, four, nice, five, nice. Eight. And that's our usual slot, you know, 10 a.m. to uh, um, 12 noon. So Okay, right. So breaking news. Yeah. As much as I said I'm not going to move, it looks yeah, like I, I am move. because the one and only Mr. Rick Clark is kicking me out. So if I'm going to be kicked out, you kicked go. out by Rick Clark is good enough. So <laughs> I'm going to say my goodbyes, check into 458, keep it media live right now, and I'm out till later. See ya. Yeah, see you later. Bye. <laughs> oh, Hi, oh my gosh, the Clark. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you guys? Mm. Good, thank you. All right. Thank you. You're looking well tropical. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, well tropical going on there. Um, Glenda and Rick Clark, thank you ever so much for, for, for joining yeah. us on, on the Lifestyle Show. I mean, what a thing, COVID-19, you know, impacting globally the world. You know, this pandemic has just, you know, hit us all really well. Yeah. We, we know um, you guys have kept up with what's going on in the UK because, of course, you're obviously ex-UK Pats. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Going on. But what we want to know, Mm. It's what's going on over there. So can we talk to you about your own experiences of uh, COVID-19, including it, the lockdowns, and how it's impacted on your business? Um, well, it's been devastating. Um, everything's shut. You know, uh, all like now, we're allowed to go uh, into the sea from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and then we have to come out of the sea and go back <laughs> home and, and stay at home. And oh, that's shocking. That's shocking for you. We're not near yeah. the platform. We're near the nearest thing we've got so far. You know, it's great. But, you know, we're inside and stay in the, nobody's on the streets. It's just unbelievable um, to, to be in this 2020 and then see what's going on here in the world. And it's all these different stories. We don't know what's really going on. People are lost. We don't know what's really happening. What is really happening? Everything's come to a standstill. It's stopped. Yeah, yeah. Life is. Yeah, you, got a as well. you know. Right. Curfew. Yeah. What Hear time me? going to? What time of the evening? Did that just come through from the government? Within the first um, week of Easter, uh, we were allowed out from um, six a.m to 8 p.m. Mm. And that seemed to work well. I think there was a lot of guidance they followed from the USA and the UK. And I think they kind of followed other mm. countries, the major countries that we kind of see as the ones to look to. Um, but within a few days, it seemed that a lot of people were flouting it. So they were going out more, they were congregating mm. in bigger groups. And just um, that week of Easter, she, um, the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Mia, put the lockdown to 24 mm -hmm. hours, so we had to stay in. Mm -hmm. And that was more devastating because, of course, if you've got smaller um, properties and units mm -hmm. where you're in bigger families, yeah. you know, with this heat and everything, and then you're in 24 hours. And that was purely because she had done um, the phases of um, the numbers. As soon as they started to increase that people were infected, she did her she put in her phases and and um stopped people from going out until the numbers decreased mm -hmm. can i just ask you uh, what was the highest number that contracted covid it was approximately in the range of 80 um that it went up to um within the first two phases once it got over 25 was where she really 
wanted to, to kind of contain it. But um, yes, mm. it's got up to 80, but we've had approximately 50 recovered, mm. which is really, really um, fantastic news. Um, and sadly, we have had um, seven deaths up to now. Seven people. And um, it, it is devastating, yeah. no matter yeah. what, no matter what, um, up to the age of about 95 year old. But it's, um, yeah, it is, it's sad news. You yeah. know, just one loss of life is just bad during yeah. this time, as yeah. you can imagine. Yeah. So I think that prompted um, her to do that. But within the last two weeks, Mm. because they, they haven't had any um, increased cases, mm. they have now opened it back up now. So as um, Rick had said, that we can now go to the sea because that was on total mm -hmm. um, lockdown to the, to the sea. So now we're out from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. But you can go out now from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. during the daytime about your daily business. Oh, She's opened up the um, the uh, construction and um, other kind of um, daily work and essentials, yeah. except for, which I think is the same in the UK, um, hair salons, which is uh, devastating, barbers, um, spas, and hotels. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, from, but you can do, you can have um, takeouts or deliveries but yeah, so I think those are the last phases. And I think, again, as I said, I think they follow yeah, the lead yeah, through yeah. from the UK and the Wait. USA. So those leisure facilities haven't been opened but up yet. But can I say something, um, uh, Pamela? I believe, I thought we needed this to stop, to stop. Because, I mean, we've learned so much from each other. I mean, we've I think we was thinking of having another child. I think yeah. part of a new family. <laughs> You know, it's been um. Oh, gosh, oh gosh. It's, um, yeah, and it's the time got <laughs> We know, we know that, that we, you know, London Elite. That is that is your business, and every year, um, yeah. Estival, you're you're down there. This has yeah. been over twenty years. Give me the, the the figures. Twenty? How many years? Well, um, twenty five years 20 plus. We actually started the whole events promotions um, mm. yes. since our wedding in 91, where we yeah. went out to Florida. Yeah. Um, we did three trips to Antigua the following mm. year and to Dubai. Um, so we have done group trips, um, you know, over the Caribbean. Mm. So in total, um, it would be 29 years this year, but 26 years so going to St. 25 Lucia. year anniversary. Three, yeah, going to um, St. We've been St. Lucia, um, London East, St. Lucia, 25 yeah. years. Where so, she, we and put, this, we put Mm, sorry. 2020, it has stopped. So how have you, years. you? Because this year it couldn't go on. So no. it couldn't go on, yeah. And it was devastating. Oh, but I terrible. think because the important thing is a prime minister there, um, Honourable Alan Chesney, had shut the island down um, earlier than I think most of the islands had shut down. He did quite an unprecedented thing, we think, quite quickly. Mm, but yeah. that showed you that the numbers mm. um, in St Lucia hadn't even, I yeah. think, reached 20 to those who had yeah, contracted. There was yeah. I've just spoken to the High Commissioner, um, yes. hey, just yesterday, and yeah. there's no new cases. There's no, yes. never have been. And no. The two cases that were of actually British orientation, um, yes, seventeen yeah. max, and that was it. So yes, yeah, done a brilliant job. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh brilliant yes, yeah, job. yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so I think, yeah, I think it's just the the travellers, those yeah. who are used to going. That was oh. their yearly holiday, mm. and the groups together. And we we know the islands need it. We know that they need it for the tourism and yeah. the hotels. Oh yeah, this, so and we think for people, they had been. Um, putting together their outfits mm. and you know just knowing that they were going to meet the yeah. you know the locals and party with them and then just enjoy what yeah. the island has to offer it's missing yeah. but of course safety comes first yeah apparently. Mm. and it's funny because um like here in, in Barbados you call the cruise ships they've been parked up here mm. about 20 of them mm. all around the island this yes. is an amazing sight to see yes. um we don't know when they're going to get back to business because i mean you know for some of the ships are out there like four thousand people capacity yeah and they're all out there on, yeah. the, on the water yeah at night you see them the lights are up and you know it's like and nobody can go and can look out and the police come around to make sure because yeah. it's fifty thousand uh dollar fine if you're caught outside what? on the street yeah. fifty thousand dollars 
if you if you go against any of the curfews, I I I know they're just warning people mm. at the moment, and they are doing checks, but they are taking it very very seriously. Mm. I feel that the um, island has to be sure that they have enough of the medical supplies and the equipment. They're just really trying to take care of their people, and I think any measure that they can do is 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 important yeah. because if you compare um, us again, I keep saying the UK and the US. Mm. Um, the medical facilities and the things that you find that they have mm -hmm. um, failed or not been able to 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 really help the situation. Mm -hmm. I think the islands are, you know, in fear that we would do the same. So they would have yeah. to put in as much measures as they can to yeah. protect the public. And I think that's important. Yeah. So we, just, right, right. But, we um, have to abide to it the best that we can. The one good thing, though, Pamela, the one good thing is, um, uh, you know, at the number one record called Friends I released last year. Me and yeah. God. It's now become the number one lockdown song. Indeed. I've and, heard it. Um, yes. You know, and that's really nice to know everybody's playing the song and they love it. Yeah. It's doing really well again. It's gone back to number one. It would do and, indeed, um, because everyone's locked in and we want to yeah. hear entertainment. We want to hear good music. Yeah, and, and yes. Yeah. It's nice to see yeah. all the different DJs playing their stuff on the yeah. different on the channels and they've got all their uh, online sites working and playing Fifth Avenue and all the DJs playing and it's yeah. great. You it's know, great. But we need, we need, we need, really, they yeah. shouldn't have shut the churches. I mean, they should have had a way where we could go to church. Yeah, it's it's only that the fact that when you think about a mass service, you've got how many hundreds yeah. that are in one in one yeah. service. So yeah. how yeah. to do a two meter distance? Then you have to streamline it. So how many services you can have a day? Or they yeah. really couldn't work. You know, yeah. so. We our streamline we have we go we go to mass you know remotely you know, mm -hmm. you know we yeah. just yes. mm -hmm. and everyone just very quickly because we do have to round this up i want to talk about your hotel business because we're talking about the heights Collins heights and i was hoping that the viewers could see this gorgeous place um yeah. is that so much of it we can't <laughs> see much we could see a little bit <laughs> oh, lovely. oh gorgeous there you go yes <laughs> Yes. That we put the link, they put the link so that we can get it on your hotel business. The impact has been very devastating because, as I said, tourism is the big thing on the island where people are employed and, and the income is in. We've had to really repurpose us to um, staycation local visitors and hoping that the islands now will be able to also um, be able yes. to come over and, in, and um, enjoy. But the impact is, is severe. Yeah. Um, so that's what we've had to work on is just repositioning, yes. repurposing our promotion to get local staycation yeah. um, on the island yeah. um, to, to come and enjoy. So that's one thing we've always done. Yes. Provide. Staycation is where people stay in the in the country mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you holiday at the various different lovely hotels that are here. And yeah. we're one of the ones that we provide the service. Yes, yeah. The, the way to enterprise, this is what you do because people have had to readdress themselves and redesign their mm -hmm. company, their business. Mm -hmm they've got so that's brilliant we need to roll so i need to get you guys to give us your all your social media contacts rock, rock with the north yeah. yes excellent yeah, yeah, we'll so we've got marlins heights barbados on facebook and instagram and then we also have the rick clark um facebook um, and instagram mm. and you'll be able to get all the details on there yeah. and we've got the london elite also on instagram and facebook so if you can dm us a dm and contact us via that we'll be able to give you great rates there is anything you need it's okay. been a pleasure. I was going to get you to sing. I said, oh, let me tell you, I've got to rush this now. But you can quickly sing. Just sing as quickly as we go. Hi. 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 I'll see you along the way. That should have been your cue. Oh, I'll see you along the way. Bye. Bye, baby. And especially, especially listen, just thank you. Listeners. And also my love to all the families. Um, thank you. The ones who've lost. Uh, somebody close. We've yes. lost a uh, very close friend, uh, Randy Ferrer, Rudolph Ferrer, which is yeah. very sad um, for us. And uh, there's so many people out there yeah. that have lost people. Yes. That we're praying for them and pray that they can get through it and pray we all get through all this moment in time. Yes. And um, that gets back to normal because this this um, um, separating people, it's not good. Um, we need numbers. We need numbers. We, you know, we need yeah. people to come back Thank together. You. We need to get back out and Thank you, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. That view. Thanks ever so much. Take care. Bye. 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 I love it. He calls me Pamela. He sounds like my dad. Um, it's, 
can. That's all good. Okay, next up, I believe we have the entrepreneur, Julian Hall. Are you with me? Hello, Julian. How are you? Hello. You're on. How are you, Julian? How are you, Julian? Hi, how, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I think I caught you on the up there, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry about yeah, that. No, I, was, I was on mute, so... um. Okay, okay. Here. First of all, I love that that title, The Ultra, not Ultra, Ultra. I want to whack with that, first of all. <laughs> what does that mean? I love it. So, yeah, so good, good question, actually. Um, so, and, and the U is for, is for Ultra on my, on my T-shirt. Um, so the entrepreneur came about because I felt that entrepreneurship was out of date and that it wasn't working as well as it should have been working. And actually, I wanted to go beyond just being an entrepreneur and being the best that I could be in all areas of my life. Because the word ultra means to go beyond. Yeah. So, so, so an entrepreneur goes beyond just thinking about money, but thinks about relationships with family and friends, um, thinks about their physical and mental health, um, and make sure that they're, that they're doing what they love. Excellent, excellent. So um, tell us a bit about, um, the, you know, your, the whole of your um, enterprise here. Now, it, it's a, it's a four-year-old um, social enterprise, and it's called Ultra Education, um, yes. successfully teaching entrepreneurship to primary and secondary schools. I love that because you're talking about the young. So let's have a feel a bit more about that. Talk to us. Sure. So we, uh, as you said, teach entrepreneurship to kids in schools. Um, we do one-to-one -one tuition. Uh, we had two of our facilitators just come off um, a Zoom boot camp, weekend boot camp with about 15 kids. And effectively... We lost you, Julie. Are you there? Use entrepreneurship as a way to develop employed... I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we use entrepreneurship as a vehicle to develop employability and life skills in children from a young age. So we start from seven years old because we think that... Um, entrepreneurial skills are the types of skills that employers want, the types of skills that parents want. And we found ways to make it fun by introducing the idea that entrepreneurship is something uh, or an entrepreneur is someone who does what they love and they make money from it. Yeah. So when we work with kids, we just ask them, what do you love doing? What are your hobbies? What makes you smile? And then we can show them how they can turn that into a business. Yeah, brilliant. Um, you've also co-written three degrees in entrepreneurship and, and it's launched uh, the UK's first mobile game for kids. So the kids are enjoying it because they think it's a game, but they're learning. So that's brilliant. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because if you ask anyone um, who is into education, so if you ask an educational psychologist, they'll tell you that whether it's kids or adults, we learn best when we're having fun. Yes. But I think you'll agree for most kids, uh, learning isn't isn't that fun <laughs> especially when, when they're going to school learning isn't isn't that fun so when yeah. we started ultra we, we wanted um entrepreneurial education to be fun because then kids will be will be more engaged they'll get more done and you know we'll have more success stories and we'll be able to accelerate their learning far more quickly if they are really enjoying the process so and and actually all we're doing is reflecting what happens with with grown-up entrepreneurs i mean you know, entrepreneurs are the types of people who are envied because they are, they're really enjoying what they're doing. You know, they spring out of bed on a Monday morning, they work long hours, and it's because they're really passionate about the work that they do. So they don't necessarily see it as work. So we wanted to reverse engineer that for kids. Excellent. I think that's absolutely brilliant. You have recently um, been elected Freeman of the Guild of Entrepreneurs and Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts, don't you know? Um, yeah, this is brilliant. You've also um, launched the world's first um, artificial intelligence um, chat box that can teach entrepreneurship to kids and teens called um, Hashtag Arcs Ultra. This ingenuity of yours, talk to me a bit more about that, Julie. Were, were you sort of like a real, you know, geek when you were younger? Were you computerized very early? What, you know, talk to me about your background. Well, that, yeah, so I mean, I was, I used to program games when I was seven or eight years old. Um, you know, when my parents bought me a, a computer, they didn't know what they were doing. So they just shoved it in front of me and I just started typing things away. But, you know, I never became like a super geek, but I was, I used technology as an enabler. I was really comfortable with tech. So I used tech to help me 
in work, to help me in business, to help me to make money, to help me to, you know, to do things that would enable me to learn and experience the world um, in a more meaningful way. So that has powered myself as an entrepreneur technology has been the thing that has powered me um and i've wanted to take that capability to the next generation so um in order to reach more kids with our entrepreneurial curriculum because doing it face to face we can do maybe 15 or 20 kids at, at a time but with an app we can do it across 142 countries and we can do potentially millions of kids at a time of course and it's not just about the kids because you're you're also helping the teachers and parents. Yes, we are indeed. So I, I did a workshop about this recently and it was around if you are um, delivering some benefit to a customer or to someone you're trying to help, who influences them? So when we started working in schools to deliver entrepreneurial education to, to students, we realized that if we walk out of the room and the teachers aren't on board or the teachers aren't reinforcing what we've said, then we've, you know, it's been a lost effort. So we started to run uh, kind of inset days and um, CPD days with teachers and, and most recently at a school in South London uh, we did a session with over 100 teachers on how they could introduce the theme of entrepreneurship into their curriculum because then it means that um, you know there's opportunities for entrepreneurship in everything whether it's in languages whether it's in science whether it's in maths and so we help them to see how they can introduce entrepreneurial thinking and entrepreneurial skills into their topic so that their topic becomes more practical and more actionable and therefore the student understands why they're learning this and what they can do to take it into the real world and yes. therefore they're more engaged with the topic. Indeed, Julian, these times, so look what we're doing, we're, 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 I'm interviewing you, you're in your home, I'm in my home and in these times that we've all had this lockdown, we've all been isolated, we've all been at home longer and knowing to, that we now have to do it like this, whatever we do do, whether it's work, you know, office work, whatever, this is great. So this is a time also to engage on more children even, don't you think so, and parents? Absolutely. And one of the things that we realised really quite quickly was that uh, both parents and teachers were struggling to keep their kids engaged because everything was very different. You can't expect parents to deliver the national curriculum. Uh, you can't expect teachers to be as engaging over, you know, Google Hangouts or Zoom as they would be if they were there in the room with those students. So we've stepped in and we are and we've helped parents to um, deliver uh, something which has got an educational value but isn't strictly academic um yeah. but still has academic value uh, and that's been you know a huge lifesaver for parents even just sharing with parents how we deliver an engaging class is is also really important but also with schools so you know schools necessarily don't have the capacity to be able to um work with so many kids and to keep them engaged and to keep them motivated so we've helped um schools to do some of that work as well yeah, I just want to do, I'm not, not going to try and boost your head, but I do need to let the viewers know this. Um, you've been a winner of the London Prestige Awards, winner of the National um, Mentee of the Year, winner of the Pride of Brent SNE of the Year, winner of the uh, B Moguls Award, finalist National Business Awards, Outstanding Contribution to Children, Potential Unlocked, Business of Entrepreneurship, Sisters Empowerment. Phew, your head hasn't gone big because... <laughs> You know, that's, that is just standard. I mean, this is, this is so... Well, I'll be honest with you, the reason why my head doesn't go big is because yeah. for... It's funny, I said this to one of my mentees about six months ago. I said, for everything you see me win, yes. I've lost 10 times. So it's not, you know, so there's a balance, right? And, you know, what you've, what you've um, done there is you've given people the highlight reel, which is, which is amazing. You know, the highlight reel looks good. But behind the highlight reel... I mean, you know, we get no's, we get disappointments, we get we, we experience failure all the time. So that that keeps us grounded. But because we are passionate about what we do, then we keep keep moving keep moving forward. But I am very grateful for all of the organisations that recognise our work, all of the people that support us and celebrate us. Yeah. I mean, it really. I mean, we need encouragement too because it is difficult, um, and so it means a lot. Yeah, it's a mark of achievement, and uh, well, well done. And and it was, uh, I think, just as a complete be yourself for all your work and effort. We have to round up now, Julia, so I need you to put out to, to, to our, our viewers all your social media contacts. Sure. So if you go on to Google and type in Ultra Education or The Ultrapreneur, 
or if you go onto Instagram and just put in at Ultra Education or at The Ultrapreneur, then you'll find us, say hello, and we'll definitely say hello back. Excellent. Julian Hall, it's been a pleasure. You take care of yourself, and I know that we'll catch you again later on. I'm sure we will. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Here she is. Hiya. <laughs> I'm the long last. How are you? You've been patiently waiting. I mean, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You know how, how it goes. You know, things, this is live and, you know, anything can happen. But it's one of the show, Eddie Edwards. Um, for the, for the uh, benefit of our viewers, I, I called you a poet. I said, you're an author. Um, talk to me. Um, you, you love poetry, but give me history. How did it all come about, Tenny? Um, my writing journey began when I found myself in a really um, quite dark place in my life. Um, I was feeling really lost in my career path because I studied law, was working as a legal assistant for quite a while, but I just felt like um, I couldn't be myself. Like the way that I was um, starting to talk, the way that I was talking started to change because I tried to fit into the um, corporate culture, so I was changing the way I was speaking. Um, I was changing the way I was styling my hair, and I just felt like I couldn't be myself, and I just wasn't enjoying it. So I felt really lost in my career path, and felt like I was the only one out of all my friends who had no idea what it is that I wanted to do. And at the same time, I was going through heartbreak as well. So I was feeling really insecure about myself, and. I just felt like my whole life was just not going according to plan and f falling apart. And I don't know what led me to picking up the, pe the pen and the journal, but that's what I did. Mm. And I literally vented my pain out um, on paper. And that was the beginning of my writing journey. Yeah. You, you described it to me as if, you know, the, the notepad was your yeah. therapy. Yeah, that, that's an amazing description. So you, all your thoughts and think you, you was writing it all down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I had no idea what impact that would have on me. But when I did write it down, I just felt like, I don't know, I just felt like such a release. Did, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Did it feel as if, you know, this sort of heavy burden yeah. was starting to slowly lift off your shoulders because you're actually taking it out on, uh, you know, the pen with the power of the pen and writing it down. And it was sort of like all coming in through on that. Definitely. Kind of, I mean, is that a good description of it? Yes, it definitely is. I mean, I felt like throughout my life, I had always silenced my voice. I was never really the person to speak about things that had happened to me or speak about challenges that I was going through. Like I was always the silent one. So I think that as well, that was the reason as well why it felt like such freedom um, to open up and to be really honest with myself in my journal. Um, it was literally an eye opener for me. Yeah. You, you've also um, yourself been described as a self-love advocate. Yeah. yeah. You said about heartbreak. So I'm kind of thinking, is that part and parcel? Can you give us a bit more? Yeah, sure. Um, the reason why I describe myself as a self-love advocate is because of the self-love challenges that I went through. And I like to share um, the things that helped me to overcome the different challenges and the different practices that I that I did um, to help me build a stronger relationship with myself. I like to share that on my social media accounts um, to try and help other people overcome their challenges that um, in terms of the relationship that they have with themselves. And um, the heartbreak just really um, just made me feel insecure about the way that I looked. And I just felt like, I really felt like I wasn't good enough. And I wrote to empower myself and to affirm my self-worth and to tell myself that I am good enough and that um, I am worthy of love. And that's what I like to put across on my social media so that other people can can feel that too within themselves. Exactly. I was just going to come on to that, that other people can, and particularly the younger folk. Um, yeah. it, sometimes they find it very challenging. And in this climate that we have now, it is extremely challenging to keep, you know, sort of like the mental well-being intact and to, uh, you know, try and persevere that. So maybe what you're giving them is, well, hold on, why don't you get a diary out? Why don't you start writing? Would, would you say that that is a good thing to do? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I put a poll out on my Instagram stories a couple of days ago to ask, um, is self-love something that you're struggling with? 
and 80% of people voted yes. And for me, I know, and for me, it just made me feel really, really sad that a lot of us are struggling to love ourselves. And so um, that's why I, I write what I write and that's why I continue to share and also try to um, discuss different challenging um, topics and vulnerable topics with other people um, so that we can really try and help um, change that narrative mm -hmm. and um, especially during this time I mean I definitely have gone through mental challenges <laughs> during this time of just wanting to go out and socialize because it's just really difficult to um, be locked up for me anyway. Um, yeah. So that's why my friend and I um, launched a new initiative, which is called the Seed Project. And it's a project to encourage the practice of healthy habits um, through COVID-19 and post COVID-19. And um, so we would like to create a platform where we can um, encourage people to get involved in self-care activities and exercises and discussions with experts and professionals in their fields such as financial educators, psychotherapists, body confidence coaches and people like that so that we as millennials can get um, help and access the those people um, without having to wait in um, long waiting lists to see a psychotherapist or yeah. Um, having to pay extortionate amounts to see those people individually. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just looking at this this list of celebrity names, and I've just like you know bowled over. You, you, you it's a, <laughs> Instagram feeds of celebrities like Wesley Snipes, Chloe Kardashian, Dasha Palenko, and Candy Burris. I mean, that's to name a few. But I mean, wow, how do you feel? How do you feel when you know seeing that? I mean, like I never ever could have imagined that my words would have ended up in people that I have grown up watching on TV <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was definitely um, heartwarming to see that you know they've been able to resonate with some of the things that I've written and it just comes to show you know regardless of how much I think people feel like if someone has is of celebrity status and has a lot of money they don't really have as much issues as us yeah. and it just goes to show that you know we all go through the same emotions doesn't it and feelings regardless of of our status. Um, exactly, I think it's absolutely brilliant. So this this new initiative, you just said it just recently launched. Yes. And so far, how has that been going? Um, it's actually been going very well. We're on um, 98 supporters. Our target is 4,000 and we've raised 3,392 so far. So um, I think it's going really well. We've had a lot of supporters and the comments have been so heartwarming. Um, a lot of people believe in it and feel like it's so necessary, especially in this time. And yeah, we're just going to keep going on with it. And we would be grateful for any support um, in terms of sharing it or donating if you can. Um, no contribution is too small. Let's get that going on now, Tinny, then. So let it out. How can they do this? Um, so if you follow me on Instagram at Tene Edwards and click on the link in my bio, you will see... Um, the link to our project to our crowdfunding project and if you click on there you can read more about it we put a video up you can watch the video and help support there thank you thank you ever so much Jenny you are an inspiration and thank good you. luck thank you ever so much thank take you very care. much for having me take no care take care we'll see you later on in the year okay yeah sure <laughs> okay thank you. bye Tilly bye, bye. Okay, wonderful. Oh, lovely lady. Very inspirational. What a moving story and positiveness as as, as we ended there. Positiveness all the time. I, I, I know we've got my um my guru, my gospel guru, who's been waiting in the wings patiently, and she's a very patient person. Um, Annette B. Hey. Can we have you please? Hi. Oh. Hi. 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 Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to see you. I, I mean, I'm, it's been what a year and a half. I know, and I can't even give you a hug. I, but we can do this. <laughs> I well, love it. <laughs> oh gosh, how have you been coping through for everything? It's been difficult. I'm not going to lie. It's been difficult. I've lost so many loved ones during this season. 
two family members and 15 friends, um, people that I know from church, friends. Oh, it's just been horrendous. And I can't even go to any of the funerals. You know, yeah. that's the awesome part. I'm the heart wrench of it as well. But you're not only grieving yeah. the impact of that and then the fact that you can only select a certain amount. And uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. my, my father-in-law died just a few days ago, mm -hmm. uh, Revel Taylor, and we're, you know, organising his funeral. And we have to be picking who can attend. It's just crazy. It is. Um, um, to hear that, I'm sorry for, for your last um, recent loss there, and, and as you say, 15 others as well. I mean, wow, it has impacted on so many of us. It really yeah. does, and it make you feel as if you know it's really dark times. But we sometimes need to give a lift, though. We need to see the light. Yeah, absolutely. Even though for these dark times, we need to sort of keep up there, keep on a level. We got to smile. We got to laugh. Yeah. We got to keep doing it. Yeah. What else keep our, our mental health in check. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, I understand you still have been um, slightly busy because you recently came. Well, when I say that, isn't are we talking March? Uh, you recently went abroad to South Africa. Yes, um, I was actually in South Africa when all the news broke about um, you know closing all the airports and so forth. My children were on the phone. Mom, you're gonna get a flight tomorrow. Come Ooh. home. And um, and I was with my aunt in um, South Africa. She lives in America, yeah. and I was supposed to be coming back from South Africa the Saturday, the twenty first, and flying out to the US on the Wednesday to bury my my other aunts. Um, and my, when we was in America, I'm um, sorry, South Africa. My aunt just said, "The net, you can't go come to the funeral in the US. They're closing down all the airports." I thought, "Oh my God!" So it's just been horrendous. Yes. A nightmare. But in God we trust. In God we trust. In God we trust. I mean, in God we trust because you came back safely. Yes, just about. I mean, yeah. one of my friends, one of the, because um, we went for the women's conference that we do, I Am Her, book launch, my album launch, and the women's conference. Wow. And um, it's me and my other organiser. She's still in South Africa now, stranded. Sorry. Yeah. Absolutely. So I just missed it by literally a few days, literally. Because yeah. she's yeah. you were meant to be here. You were yeah. you were meant to be here. You were meant to be here. Yeah. Um, I understand you do have um, a musical video for um, you know to uh, pleasure our viewers. Yes, I do. Yeah. You know, we're still spreading the word of God. We have to spread hope and joy. And um, this artist that I know, Dennis McLean, he's been singing for a number of years. He's got an awesome, awesome voice. And he's released a new video for the remix of his song. So we've got that lined up for you, but he's so amazing. He's so humble. And we have to spread the word of God during this difficult time so that people can find some peace, some joy in the midst of everything. Yo, you don't know it's Dennis McLean. Yeah. And Shalom Catalyst. Yeah. Longside Saint Angel. Oh, oh, the spiritual Rambo. Oh, oh, don't know. Oh, 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 oh. Father God, the mama born and fine. Make them know. Can him and who and we are alive. Every day. Say, now me Jenna. Come tell the Lord something. Say. Oh, Lord, you know that I have no friend like you. None. And if heaven Never. is not my home, then Lord, where would I go? Me no you know. see the angels, they beckon me from, where? from heaven's open door. And I cannot feel at home in this world anymore. Every time I feel the spirit. Try to not not time. Hey, we 
could I never try to not know it don't you Even when we back against the wall Lord. That's why me have to pray Every night and every day Me no want to go astray You're the part of me and the clear With the enemy, me not go play Follow him out, put around here Demon, me a slave for me, me keep him out here Every time I feel the spirit In the shadow of the Almighty, daily and nightly, never we will bow to see. The enemy shall never, never. And we will always serve the king. <laughs> Miss Emmy, can't do nothing without you. Can't do nothing. We can't move a muscle without you. We would have lost, would have struggled without you. <laughs> Miss Wall would be in a trouble without you. That's why me have to pray every night and every day. Cover me want to go astray. You're the part of me, I declare. With the enemy, you're not going clear. Follow him out, put it around here. Demon, me a slave for me, me keep them out here. Oh, Lord, you know that I have no friend like you. But if heaven is not my home, then no. In the secret place, shall be no evil. He dwell in the shadow of the Almighty, daily and nightly. Never we will bow to see. The sin. enemy shall never be. And we will always serve the King. This and every time I feel the King spirit of kings and Lord of Lords moving in my heart, I'm calling the tribe of Judah. I pray. Excellent. Who's that again, Dennis McLean? Yes, featuring St. Andrew and Salam. Right. The, yeah, the Carrie McLean, is he related to a, the McLean family, the singer? Yes, yes, he is. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he related to? <laughs> uh, John, yeah, it's his nephew. John, that's his nephew? Yeah, yeah. Wow, keep it in the family, yeah. eh? Yeah. yeah. It's very talented indeed. I'm telling you. Great. And... Um, it's it's actually out now. It's done a remix of the song, and it's amazing. Okay. Um, uh, the the next um, guest. It's not a music video. It's um, Sai, amazing award winning gospel artist, and she had the COVID nineteen, so she's actually recovered. So we've just got a few minutes of her telling us her actual experience in the hospital dealing with the COVID-19 virus. And then she came out Easter, uh, Good Friday, and then her dad went in on the Saturday and died on the Tuesday, Brother Hamilton, you know? And to hear her story is just amazing. So that's Cy, um, 
recovering from. We might be able to play all of it because we're running out of time, but let's hear okay. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's go. And it be, this is your friend, Sister Sam speaking, your childhood friend. Bless the Lord. I just want to say thank you very much for inviting me to come and introduce um, the song. He did it. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit of testimony. I'm just going to try and keep it very short and sweet. Um, bless the Lord. It was um, in this very room that the paramedics came in and um, my coffin and uh, blood was in the tissue. And two and two, Isaac four, four and four, Isaac eight, you know, and they whisked me off to the hospital. And um, at the hospital, they, because I had the fibromyalgia, they were hitting me and they were pulling me. They were jocking me with needles here and there, even through my, 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 my knuckles, my hands. And you can still see it here. There's just a bit of a scar here where they was pushing the needle up in here. Right, the ones put cannula in here. Oh my gosh. I was jumping and screaming all over the place. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I had to go to her. So I said to the Lord, Lord, I can't take no more. I couldn't take no more. And I just heard him say, come on up. I just heard him say, come on up. And I just went up. I didn't levitate or go out of my body or anything. It just went into a different space. That's a bit, the best way I can describe it. And I remember looking down at my arm as they were pam, 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 pam on my arm and pushing the needle in and picking it out and pushing it in. And I didn't feel a thing. I didn't feel a thing. I thank God. I thank God. You know, I had to stay in that area for the night. And the next day they put me on this different place. I don't even know if it was a ward because I was a bag of confusion. I didn't know what was going on. And um, this horrible doctor came in and he says, uh, we have made a clinical decision. We are not going to intubate you. We're not going to resuscitate you. We're not going to um, give you CPR. We're not putting you on life support. If you start to pass away, you just pass. And um, I said, um, right, okay, because I, I didn't know what he was talking about. My daughter found from America and she asked me what was going on. And I told her, she said, mom, she said, you know what he's saying? They're saying that they're going to let you die. And I says, you're joking. And she says, yes, mom, you're going to make them see that you're a human being. And so um, the next day, the man come down with great rage upon me. Great rage saying, you are 57 years old, right? You have um, fibromyalgia, you've got high blood pressure, you've got diabetes. Why is your daughter phoning from um, America? Well, I thought we had an understanding. And shouting at me, you know, shouting loud at me and gripping, gripping the end of my bed. I says, listen doctor i said i i'm sorry i heard your words yesterday but i didn't understand it i didn't understand it's my daughter that explained it so i'm telling you that i'm going to write a letter and i want you to put it into my files because i've got four children 10 grandchildren and a daddy to get home to and i've got an album to go and finish so i can't die in here he says we are not going to change our decision i said well that's your business but I am writing my letter and he stormed off. And I thought, you know, there's me. I'm 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 coughing up the blood and I've got the, the, the oxygen here. I coughing up the blood, got the oxygen here. And the man had no compassion. <laughs> what? You know, I've since found out that the the cutoff age is 50. If you walk in there 50 years old and you've got any kind of underlying issues, they're writing you off. They saw my 94-year-old dad and they ripped him up. Three days, he was dead. You know, but listen, i got to hurry because I'm going to have to cut this now. I'm introducing this song called He Did It. You know, Jesus went to the cross for all of us. He died for every single person that's been here and coming. And um, his blood is so efficacious to wash away all of our sins. We don't have to huckle up ourselves now and to try to do the work that J Jesus has already done. Yes, 
we can just now walk in freedom of life if we fall and you know you're gonna fall if we fall we get up we repent and we move on in christ we don't get ourselves at all we got to backslide and run away like adam tried to hide himself no the work was done and he did it just for you and for me and i hope you understand that <laughs> I think we're going to have to see more of that the next time, Annette, that you're on. We're going to have to see that that musical side. We've completely run out of time. Annette, at this point, can you just give our, our, our viewers all your um, contact details? Yes, if, you, if you've if got a story to tell, contact me. Um, you can email me at Annette underscore B, that's A-N-N-E-T-T -E underscore B-E-E -E at Y mail.com or you can hook me up on instagram and it be official or on messenger simply and it be by facebook thank you annette thank, you, Pam. thank you yeah okay okay um right now uh, this is where it gets slightly serious now as well because um this is an issue that has just sort of raising its ugly head um, on our shores in the UK. I'd like to introduce uh, to you uh, Patrick Vernon OBE, uh, social commentator, campaigner and cultural historian. Uh, Patrick, are, are you with me? Yes, I am. Ah, oh, good afternoon to you, Patrick. How are you? Long time. Yes, it's been a long time, Pam. It's been ages. Um, it's been, you know, I mean, we've got back quite a while, don't we? Yeah, we do. Oh, you can start revealing our ages. <laughs> you can reveal your age. I'm still 21. Anyway. <laughs> lovely. It's lovely to see you, Patrick. Yeah, likewise. Likewise. My gosh, where should we start? Let's let's go wham straight into it. Just come out today uh, a, a letter of campaign for an independent inquiry on COVID-19 and the BAME communities, Black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. In the UK, we need to inquire make this huge and big we are being told by the office of national statistics that uh, we black males and females are four times more likely uh, to mm. die of this terrible uh, disease than our white counterparts before we go into the letter the campaign um patrick what are your views about that in itself well i mean i've got a personal story because uh, my sister's partner died of covid 19 about a month ago so um it's really just on a Zoom call just now with the family because we, you know, we, we can't see them. Uh, they live in Derby and I'm in London and my parents are in Wolverhampton. So um, so we just communicated by Zoom and it's just been really, really difficult for the whole family. So, I mean, there's lots of families up and down the country grieving because of losing a loved one. And in many ways, that's probably why I've, I'm part of the campaign team to find out from the government that we need a transparent, independent process around um uh, independent inquiry mm -hmm. we, we, we told patrick sorry to put in there but first of all to go on to this issue why is it that there's four percent now we've been told that there's various aspects socioeconomics um our health um i.e uh, diabetes uh sickle cell uh hypertension uh, high blood pressure duh, 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 duh. the list may go on is that really or is that really it is that a cluster is that amount that you put in there that why you we have seen that. yes we know this with an argument but yeah. um let, let's talk a bit more about that i'm not going to say what the answer is because we need to have independent inquiry obviously lots of people have jumped in talking about lack of vitamin d and a whole range of different theories and and issues and issues around that certain uh, staff have been deliberately being put in COVID wards without necessary PPE. Uh, that's why we need to have an independent inquiry to explore the health dimension, the scientific public health dimension around lifestyle and all that kind of stuff, but also look at some of the wider issues which may have impact on structural racism, particularly how BME staff are treated in the NHS and in wider society. And the only way we can do that is have a proper, proper process. Otherwise, we'll spend a lot of time speculating uh, and, and we may not find the, the, the right answers. Yeah, the transparent process, as you say, indeed. And, and wanting to restore public uh, confidence. Are we saying that really uh, the communities are not confident about, you know, just being told that this is what it is and, and it's 4% and then an Asian, uh, well, they've split up the Asian. They've said Bangladeshi and Pakistani three point. They've said Indians at uh, one mm. point. Can I just 
actually, to that point, let me ask you this question. If the um, Office of National Statistics can dissect under the word Asian, if they can dissect it to um, Bangladeshi and Pakistani against Indians, could I ask you a question? Why wasn't the word black under um, um, dissected with African and Caribbean? Because it's the way that we do our ethnic recording of stuff, and that's what being one of the major problems through this whole coronavirus process about the ethnic recording. I mean, since 1991, the NHS has to do has meant to have done proper ethnic recording, and also if you look at the census, if you look at census. If you look at black, it's often subcategorized as black Caribbean and, and black British. And so often they still use census data based on nationality. Now, for we've been here about four generations, so it's not based on we're British, but obviously we have different aspects around Africa, the Caribbean, and people of mixed race. So that's why uh, it's more difficult and it's not that comprehensive um, mm -hmm. also. And also finally, um, when people, when someone dies, um, on, you don't the ethnicity is not recorded on the, on the death certificate so basically they have to use a whole range of proxy data information and obviously what hospitals have been doing um and care homes if someone he's diagnosed with COVID 19 that's when they start to record people's ethnicity so we need to look at in more detail and that's why again we need to have an independent um inquiry to look at, at one aspect of this issue around ethnicity recording and coding yeah, yeah. You, you've got some big names here backing it up. We were talking about the uh, author of Noughts and, and Crosses, uh, uh, Mannery Blackman, OBE, uh, Baroness Doreen Lawrence, um, obviously yourself. Um, but there's also, uh, the list is endless, so I'm just going to say, Charlotte Scoffery, uh, Matt Henry, MBE. Yes. You know, it's, it's endless, it's endless, it's endless. Um, so with this, how are you hoping to really impact uh, the government on this? So what we've done, obviously, this is a this campaign is on different levels. Obviously, we've approached high-profile people of colour in Britain uh, to say that we are individuals concerned about the impact of COVID-19 on minority ethnic communities. And we use a, we use a strap line: uh, minority communities, but majority deaths, because we are dying. And not only are we dying, we also have an impact of COVID-19. And also some of the policies that the government has instituted around social distancing is not working for the community. And on top of that, you've got clear evidence of every handedness by the police around the country. And that's why we need a public inquiry. But more importantly, we want people to sign the letter, um, the letters online. And we work, there's a whole network, there's a whole group of individuals, but I'm working particularly with an organisation called Ubele, which does a lot of work, work in the black community around capacity building. And on their website, you can actually see the letter and you can actually put your add your name to the letter uh, as well. And we want to put more pressure on the government to really take this seriously. It, it's quite clear and it's quite apparent if you compare Britain to other countries around the world that we have handled this really badly. 33,000 deaths officially, yeah. maybe more. Yeah. And apart from America, we are probably one of the worst countries in the world to manage this pandemic yeah indeed indeed but when we you're going to give me all those details later for for you know all these web details and and where yeah. people go in and sign on but i just want to go into that a moment as you just say that we it, they have been you know too many reports and it's worldwide news as well that they um the government has been slammed for not dealing with this crisis from the get-go we know um, that they're telling us, and they, the government knew this at the back end of December uh, 2019 to the beginning of uh, January 2020, government was informed about this particular uh, 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 coronavirus. And, and it was dealt with very slowly, in fact, on a low uh, rate. In fact, they didn't put the alert on high at all. We can hear all that all day long about what happened, but we still want to deal with it right now. What can the government do right now to change and to to, to to get this plateau to stop this this uh, um, new uh, contract cases going on because I'm going to say this only just recently they have started to 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 test uh, passengers coming in uh, to the UK which they hadn't been doing before. This is all part and parcel of the inadequacies. And that's the one. That, so in terms of the short term, obviously the, the government has to do a lot of stuff. This, I mean. Uh, I know a lot of people working in the NHS, they're not getting the right type of PPE. 
the need to inter in the need to start this process of community testing and contract taste taste which is important otherwise what's the point of having a social distancing policy locked in your doors all day long and there's no backup to follow that it's just going to make things worse to be quite honest um and also on top of that there is a lot of support to a lot of community groups are trying to help people who are vulnerable um our elders and the women's generation and actually one of the key things on you know as we I was heavily involved in the Windrush campaign around the scandal. A lot of the Windrush generation are dropping off, are dying like flies connected with COVID 19. Our group in Wolverhampton, there are four black church pastors who have died in Wolverhampton in the last month and a half. And if, if you go around the whole country, you will find a lot of the Windrush generation have di are dying because of the impact of COVID 19. So that's another issue in itself. Um, so something needs to be done to help the community. But, and then obviously when we start the whole process of the lockdown, it's making sure that the right support resources and the right community messaging. We see these messages, stay at home. It's not culturally relevant. It's not, it's, it's not broken down the way so people can understand that basically. Um, but ultimately we must lead to definitely to a public inquiry. One of the things I've been involved in, I've, again, working with Yubele, we've launched a fund called the Majonzi Fund. Majonzi is a Swahili word means grief or deep sorrow. As I mentioned before, I've lost a family member with COVID-19 and, um, and because of the social distancing lockdown policy, people are not allowed to do the normal grieving. You can't do your nine nights, even though people have done it online. Um, you know, um, the way around the whole, the whole, the whole act of passage to say goodbye to a loved one has been um, short circuited because of COVID-19. But after lockdown, there'll be lots of families, including my family, uh, and work colleagues who want to then commemorate uh, the lives of, love, of lost ones. So the majority fund, we've raised about £7,000. It's on GoFundMe. And we want to give out grants to families, community groups, to organise events, uh, ways of saying thank you, acknowledgement. But also, um, there's another key issue, is around bereavement. Um, if you are from a North African community and you've lost a loved one and you want bereavement counselling, there are no services um, that meet the needs of our, that meets our needs, our faith needs and cultural needs. The mainstream uh, bereavement charities don't have staff that reflect us. They don't understand our culture, our identity. So we're working with a range of BME therapists and counsellors to create a consortium so we can provide free bereavement counselling for anyone affected by um, COVID-19. So we're raising money for that as well. And um, so it'd be really great to have the support of your station to help raise the fundraising campaign and efforts and of course we, the government has got money available but also it's about what we can do we can have an act of giving ourselves not to be dependent on government yeah. you know what i mean absolutely at this point patrick you've given us a lot so i need you to start listing off the all these um email addresses website addresses and everything else so do that sir Okay, right. So um, the Majonzi Fund, uh, that's on the GoFundMe webpage. Uh, so you can either do a Google search, Majonzi, spelt M-A-J-O-N-Z-I, Majonzi Fund. So you can just do a Google search. Uh, that will take you to the GoFundMe webpage. And please make a donation, share the link. Uh, if you want to have details of the petition that you would like to sign, you can go on to um, the Ubele website, uh, Ubele spelt U-B-E-L-E, -E, and the website address I can just give you, um, I should know it by heart because I've been working with them very closely. You've got so much to take in, that's what it is, you see. <laughs> so it's, um, So ubele.org. So it's www.ubele.org. You go onto the website, um, and then you click onto a section about um, we want answers. Um, all the people, all the celebrities, all the personalities in that letter that you've just mentioned, um, you can add your name to that letter, including yourself, Pam. Um, yeah. and, I, will, I will. And the more, the merrier as well. Yeah. The letter has officially gone to number 10 yes. already, uh, but we still want to build enough names on this on the letter to demonstrate to the government 
that we want answers, we want the truth, and we don't want to, to be a, 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 almost like an internal inquiry where the, the truth is doctored, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm really loving what you're doing here, Patrick. I, I really am. We want to go to that point when we, you know, we saw you there in the Houses of Parliament, uh, Windrush, uh, the, the, the scandal, um, and, and you were there quite eloquently, you know, putting your case across. And, and the petition was huge, uh, signature yeah. was huge. And this is what we want again. We want to see you there, albeit to me at distance. But anyway, we want to see you in there, impacting on this. And I don't know whether or not Baroness um, Doreen Lawrence, is she, is she sort of like really sort of um, heading this um, government running uh, sort of inquiry? No, no, no. So Baroness um, Lawrence is doing a review for the Labour Party. So about two weeks ago, Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party, announced that the Labour Party will be doing a review on the impact of COVID on BME communities. He appointed Doreen Lawrence uh, as the race advisor and, and to lead on the, the, Labour's, um, the Labour's response, I should say. Uh, and Doreen Lawrence actually is supporting this campaign for independent inquiry also, which I think is important. It's very, very important. Um, Patrick, what can I say? Thank you ever so much. I want to, people to get your website, though. You've given us the others. If you want to get hold of me, <laughs> www.patrickvernon.org.uk. Excellent. Patrick, we will be asking you to come back on to the show from time to time. And I, I know that you're so amenable um, with us, and I know you will do that. But we would we want to have your impact and, and given us up-to-date issues of what's going on, particularly um, in the demand of, of this inquiry. Would you do that? Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you ever so much, Patrick. And I'm sorry for, you know, the sad news of, of, of uh, you know, recent deaths and what have you. Thank you ever so much for taking the time out to talk to us. Do take Thank care you. of yourself. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Well, OK, so we're going to keep in tune with that. We're going to find out, you know, exactly what's happening there and um, how, how far we can go with that one, because this, this is this is absolutely needed. We definitely need to have an inquiry. We definitely need to open up. Uh, um, you know, some sort of platform. What is it? What's going on? What can be done? You know. Um, so, okay, Patrick Vernon. There. I think at this point, I'd like to get my fellow conspirator. I don't know why I call him fellow fellow conspirator. You know, where's the dark persuader? Let's get you back on. Anthony Jordan. I don't know why I keep saying. <laughs> I keep calling you this kind of conspiracy, and I shouldn't really say that, but you know, because you are the top. I'm trying to keep it clean here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say we should, we should, uh, you know, Batman and Robin sort of thing. I don't know. That's the one, that's the one. Okay. Dynamic duo, dynamic duo. I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we're going to do? We're, we're going to swing to you, we're going to deal with the um, um, the uh, entertainment corner just just before we do though can i just quickly say um you know you just heard patrick then and there you just heard about this uh, new campaign and you know pushing uh, a foreign inquiry my gosh that's what we need today we do we do um do you know what 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 i really want to say before we go into entertainment corner is yeah. what a lifestyle what a lifestyle back i mean <laughs> It's been really interesting. As a, as a spectator, I've really enjoyed it. Um, some really powerful guests there, some really powerful messages from each and every guest, and just guys mm -hmm. support every cause that's been mentioned out there. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It's been amazing. It really has. Um, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Annette. Yeah. Thank you, Rick and Glenda. Tine. Thank you, Tine Edwards. I was going to say thank you, Pam, but... Oi. We can't. <laughs> anyway, that, you, you, got, you got rid of me when you went to Barbados, yeah? I'm just saying. <laughs> it's my way of getting rid of Did you see that view? I wish I could have stayed there. My oh, God. That, that, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. It, it gives a lot of hope for when lockdown is lifted. There's a lot of stuff out there. And what I like as well is hope for when lockdown is lifted, but the work that people are doing while the lockdown is on to support each other. And for that major round Absolutely. of applause and thank you to all of them excellent yeah. all right so i'm going to leave it with you and at trinity boy do say oh hi yes. trinity. Anyway, but i'll leave it with you <laughs> hey, uh, thank you thank you okay how, how can i do an introduction to this man so he is a rep for the notting hill carnival to a degree he is your 2015 uk road monarch calabash award three years on the road semi-finalist 
UK soca groovy power monarch in 2013. He's done it all. The one, the only, Mr. Trini Boy Juicy. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. Um, actually, I'm an official as of last year. I'm one of the official carnival ambassadors, so nothing in carnival <laughs> ambassadors. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm cool, man. I'm cool. It's been a busy last two days with Zoom, and now I'm into, yeah. um, I'm into this net. I like the media net, though. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, now, nah, nice, media, no. media net are powerful. I'm telling everyone now, this is my official endorsement. Look out for them. They are doing some big stuff. Um, I, do you know what? It's, it's great to see you. Um, I think the last time I saw you, we were at North London somewhere ahead of a concert. But every time I see you, you're always busy, always up to so much. So I, you're saying two days, but I, I, you haven't stopped as far as I'm concerned. I've always seen Trilly Boy up to something, which is great. No, yeah, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't stopped. So since the last time as well, I was on um, Lifestyle Corner. Um, it was couple of years ago um and since then you know i've won more accolades um i've actually gone on to this year um having one of the biggest songs in 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 soca you know where in for trinidad carnival we had a lot of heavy airplay um played everywhere a lot of fets and unfortunately due to this unwelcoming guess who forced the way in you know we are able to, <laughs> to yeah. capitalize yeah. you know but this you know, is it. so it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. But do you know something else I saw that you've done that I, I had no clue of, and I saw it recently? Juicy Unplugged. That's a that's a big move. Yes. So the last three years, well, this would have been the third year. Um, I've been I holding my own concert. Yeah, so I've been holding my own concert. Thanks for reminding me. You see, you, think was so much, <laughs> yeah, you know, the stuff that you should be promoting. But yeah, um. I've been holding my um my concert, so uh, basically a platform to show people that um how the arts, how carnival culture, I guess soca music could be presented, um other than just carnival and jumping up whining, but in a more artistic way. So my first year I called it Juicy Unplugged because um the way I presented the songs, um it was backed by a live band, so as if it was in a fet, you know what I mean, in the Caribbean, it was backed by a live band. Um, I had um, a good friend of mine who's an anime artist. She did live painting whilst the band was playing. Wow. Um, we had like a pop-up stall for merchandise. We had other artists who um, who people may not have known of, but very creative behind the scenes who write. Who We had a wicked line of DJs. We had visual projections. So there was a lot going on, you know. So that was the first year. Um, last year, we um, focused a lot more on the music and how the music was um presented you know so um how i transitioned track by track um and last year yeah again another successful and this year would have been the icing on the cake but it seemed like we're still building this cake right now we're only second <laughs> so by the time we're ready to perform again it big like a wedding cake you know what i mean <laughs> i love that i love that brother i love that another thing that you mentioned that i'm going to touch on before we get into your your, your current stuff you talk about how with Juicy Unplugged, you wanted to give that element of more than just jumping up and down. Yeah. You've also transcended and covered different genres of music. I'm just looking here. You, you, jazz, Courtney Pine, British Neo Soul, Omar, T.O.K., Silverstone. You, you even done Boiler Room. You were the first soccer artist on Boiler Room. How did this come about? How did, have you been able to make soca seem as something more than just not in your carnival which we will be touching on a bit more with you if you don't mind um yeah no that's fine um yeah but as you mentioned i always say you know um for my first couple of years so it's been 10 years in the game um my first couple of years was about finding who i am you know um doing a subculture and i say subculture as in soca is not the mainstream culture over here is either second generation or third generation of people yeah. who parents might have played it in their house or their parents you know our grandparents might have played it so for me it was about how could i how could i make um soca music that is tangible to this audience here and that people can relate to so i said um one of my things was to um present it and push it in areas where you wouldn't expect it to be so like the courtney pine show he actually reached out to me and was like listen i want you to come and do love supreme festival fifty thousand people it's a jazz festival they would have never heard soca music in their life even live um i wanted to do your thing wow. so that was an opportunity boiler room was um a project i did with them the year before which would have been what 20 
17, I believe. Um, and I said to them, listen, we need to get Soka Music and Boiler Room. And then it so happened the following year, 2018, they had um, Boiler Room in Somerset House and they did like the Carnival Edition. So for me, I always say, you know, it's, it's good to, to do our music, but also in order for us to... Um, to build on the audience or to build on the marketing and introduce new audiences, we need to push it in places where you wouldn't usually hear it. So that's kind of my mission too, you know, in pioneering the soca music as one of the pioneers for the soca music, you know? No, big, big. Respect to you for it. It's much needed. It's done in such a beautiful way that, it, yeah, you're opening it to so many wide audiences. And I believe soca needs to be recognised as just something aside from just carnival. So thank you so much for that. Now, yeah. I've mentioned the word twice, not in Hill Carnival. <laughs> as, as, as a, <laughs> I see the head drop. There's not I'll, I'll, I'll take a drink for that. Take a drink for that. As a soca artist, I, you know, you can't say carnival without saying soca. You know, as much as we are expanding soca, <laughs> 50 years, 50 years in the UK. Luckily, I'm, I'm guessing you were in Trinidad, so Trinidad, probably one of the last ones to celebrate it. What is the impact for you as an artist? How, how are you feeling as a committee member to the Notting Hill Carnival? What, what are your thoughts? What, what, what could you say? All right, so I'm going to speak in two different hats right now. So the first hat, I'm going to speak from uh, Trini Boy Juicy um, perspective. Um, so as Trini Boy Juicy, the artist, um, Notting Hill Carnival for me, um, is not only a time to go and perform or to be on the road and jumping up, but it's about that feeling of freedom. You know, carnival means more to me. Like, I'll be honest here, carnival is bigger than a birthday for me. You understand? So, like, bigger than my own birthday, I, I look forward to carnival. And it's not just carnival, it's pan. The panorama, which happens on the Saturday, I'm a pan player. It's the first time in my life where I will not be playing pan for the year. For, for, for panorama for carnival you know and it's it, it means more to a lot of people so like the mass makers the masqueraders the artists the other soccer artists or the djs for some of us is like this is this is this is our world you know and especially from a trini boy juicy point of view this is where we as soccer artists um in regards to financially is something that we depend on you know in regards to shows is something where um where we can get to celebrate is the only light in the year which we naturally get where we don't have to force to get attention but where we naturally get and it's for us to make the most of it and that part is very hard you know i mean it's very hard to know that you know um this is a hurdle is a huge hurdle you know that we all have to i guess overcome um but yeah it's difficult but then now in the next hat now as trini boy juicy carnival ambassador it's like it's bigger than me. It's bigger than carnival happening. It's more so for the safety of um, the wider audience and the people who come in. And I guess we don't want to really give them a reason to force shut it down. So it's best we take front before front take we. And that's how I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent. Yeah. In that, in that sense, you know, um, I could understand why. I mean, I, I wouldn't like to. I was creating these little buzz on my social media where I was kind of like little conspiracy. I was like, <laughs> I, I I know everybody think it's going to be cancelled, but I'm just saying, you never know what you're going to say. The trouble. The trouble. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was posting up these little things and say like, the day that we, we broke the news um, to, to the world, you know, that the carnival wasn't happening, I sent out a... Um, I was just, I had this feeling now, but you know, I had this feeling, man, and I, the day was so gloomy, and I was like, well, I don't know where it is, but this vibe, but it was the reality, it was the, the reality that we had to accept, um, and I guess we have to be positive in looking forward to what may happen, you know, that's the best way to kind of summarize that, you know, but it is hard, it's hard, man, especially when you have a big song, and you've been graphing for a lot of years, and you finally get the spotlight, and you have the bookings, like I had X amount of bookings that got cancelled and it's like, yo, where do you move from here, you know? But God is boss and everything will be, everything will be all right, man, you know? Yeah, well, this is it, this is it. I mean, it, it's, it's a tough time, but it hasn't stopped us. 
Um, well, it stopped Carnival for now. Next year is always there. The yeah. the roads will be out. The music is still continuing. Um, we will be featuring a video from you shortly. But that, yeah. that, how have you been keeping busy as an artist? As you said, for a, a, a time where you are so looking forward to something, how how do you then keep take away from that distraction and keep yourself busy and entertain the fans all the same? Um, well, actually, since the lockdown, I've released um, I've released two projects. So between so the last eight weeks or whatever, I've released two projects. So. Um, as I came back from Trinidad, I had a show in Canada to do, which got cancelled six hours before. Um, and I wrote a song called Quarantine. This is before the yeah, word became yeah. popular and everybody was talking. <laughs> I don't have vex to take long. I take long. <laughs> um, it's like I wrote the song Quarantine, you know, and then um, as in Friday, we released um, a collaboration with myself and a St. Lucian artist, UK based artist who's from St. Lucia, called Cold Chisel, called Safeb. And it's quite, I it's, it's the, the irony, it's quite, it's funny because the name of the song is Safeb and Safeb in Creole is like, that is nothing, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the same day we announced that nothing will cancel, you know, cancel, and it's like, that is nothing, man, we go over, come back. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been still releasing music. Um, To be honest, it's been hard to be creative, obviously digesting the, 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 real, the reality. Um, so I've been doing, I mean, I've been writing here and there, but I've been, I guess, learning about other aspects of marketing the brand and developing myself. Um, and I guess so it's about a time to kind of reflect on self and to know what is important, you know, um, family, spending time, you know, with loved ones, you know, yeah. and just yeah, appreciate sure. it, you know? For sure. For sure. That, that, that's great. That's great. So we are going to introduce Sam um, Quarantine shortly. But before we do that, is, any social networks, anything you'd like to put out there, any message to the fans as Trini Boy the Ambassador, as Trini Boy the Artist, the, the platform is yours. Yeah, um, well, you can follow me. I'm seeing the chat thing, but can they see when I type in the chat or is it the private? No, 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 no. That's, 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 that's in the handle. You're revealing the secrets now. What am I doing this? You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, no, you can follow me on um, Instagram. So that's at. Trini Boy Juicy, um, it will be out there. We will, you guys will get to see it. But at Trini Boy Juicy, um, also I guess you guys can stream my music, man. Now is the best time. I guess the artists, um, we need the support, and the supporters via streaming, listening, liking, commenting, sharing the music. So you can follow me on Spotify on um YouTube. That's um Trini Boy Juicy, um, and. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I've just been informed by the powers above that is Media Net Live. If you type it in, you, it's there for, for the fans to see. So whatever you want to put out there, feel free to type away. There you go. And, that, and that's on all social networks? It's on all social networks. So once you type in that name via Instagram, well, my Instagram is me, or you can go to my website. Yeah, we have website. Don't you know, eh? hey, 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 big loser. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's Juicy Music. Um, and where you can get everything is an is a one one stop hub, you know what I mean, to get everything. So yeah, man, that's the vibes, man. Big stuff, big stuff. Loving that. Loving that. Okay, well, bro, thank you. Trini Boy, it's always a pleasure. Keep with the good music. It, it it's there for everyone to enjoy. The the atmosphere not, may not be right, but the music is still there. So you can party in your house this time. So as I said, it's quarantine. It's an injustice for me to do it. So please do the introduction. Right, so the song you guys are going to hear right now, as I'm assuming everybody is on lockdown, safe, following the guidelines. Um, the name of the song is called Quarantine, so it's Trini Boy Juicy, produced by um, producer Foreign. Um, check it out on YouTube. The Lifestyle Corner. Thank you very much, sir. Always a pleasure to have you. Always a pleasure. We'll catch up. Nice to okay, you. You, heard, you heard it from the man himself. Trini Boy Juicy, Quarantine. It's the song of the moment because we're all indoors quarantining. Enjoy it. Uh, this is this thing getting real, 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 real bad. And people are just stay in the house. People go on and do shopping, they see the fact that we zone. Quarantine. What the tell me? We cannot go party. Quarantine. And we can't touch nobody. Quarantine. They will we move like alien. Quarantine. Everything on lockdown. Quarantine. What the tell me? We can't. Quarantine, the whole place on a lockdown. Quarantine, everything on lockdown. So you 
more tell me not to party But I addicted to fat When pipes and alcohol flowing I party with no regret Tickets and flights it on purchase Everything is on set Don't try jumping me with your quarantine vibes I pushing down the fence Yeah we party with mass Party, party with mass Hey, yeah we party with mass Party, party, party with mass Yeah we party with mass Party, party with mass Hey, yeah we party with mass Infected by soca Quarantine What they tell me we cannot go party Quarantine And we can't touch nobody Quarantine They won't remove like alien Quarantine Everything on lockdown Quarantine What the tell me we cannot go party Quarantine And we can't touch nobody Quarantine The whole place on a lockdown Quarantine Everything on lockdown So you might feel like we don't business I'm not taking it serious Money spend the party on cancel That ain't making no sense to us Imagine toilet paper sell out People panic buying in shops so Shit all it was start, let we fuck this party up Yeah we party with mass, party, party with mass Hey, yeah we party with mass, party, party, party with mass Yeah we party with mass, party, party with mass Hey, yeah we party with mass Infected by Soka Quarantine, what they tell me, we cannot go party Quarantine, and we can't touch nobody Quarantine, they won't remove like alien Quarantine, everything on lockdown Quarantine, what they tell me, we cannot go party Jumping me with your quarantine vibes, I pushing down the fence. Yeah, we party with mass, party, party with mass, hey. Yeah, we party with mass, party, party, party with mass. Yeah, we party with mass, party, party with mass, hey. Yeah, we party with mass. Quarantine, what the tell me? We cannot go party. Quarantine, and we can't touch nobody. Quarantine, they won't remove like alien. Quarantine, everything on lockdown. Okay, so t- tell us, how, how did you come about the animation on that one? I, I'm going to ask it and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Me, put it out there. Just put, I, yeah, just give me a thumbs up when you finish on your question for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe you guys can hear me all day. Um, quarantine came about from, um, I said, yeah, so I was in the hotel in, in Toronto. I was to go and perform and they said the event is cancelled. And um, Yeah, I was like... You know, so you are uh, telling me not to party, but I addicted to fat. You know, I just came up with the, the lyrics. And when I came back, big up to my management, um, Kurt Lowell, who um actually um said to me, Yo, send me the lyrics, and he he got that together so quick, man. So he's he's doing fantastic work. So yeah, we just thought it would be smart to put that out and also to get the kids seeing it, you know, and also tell the message of staying home. And follow the guidelines, you know. Okay, guys, I'm really sorry, uh, Trini Boy. I'm gonna have to thank you there because I can't see anything. I, I can't actually hear anything. I'm working on the technicality at the moment. But while we are there, I'm going to then introduce to another track that we've got at the moment. This is Alba Rossi, and this is another COVID song that's out there. So this is Alba Rossi's new track. Check it out. This is the Entertainment Corner, keeping the music flowing as we do.
Logical conflict Speculations of conspiracy Maybe the earth are tell with something Maybe mankind is the toxicity You'll see the shape of my hands From the window pane Then one day I will touch your face Like I used to do And that was Alborosi and Unprecedented Times. So just a, a, a bit more of a feel of what's going on at the moment. And I am back. Can you hear me, Pam? Are we good? You're not loud and good, clear. Good, good, good. Um, so as you can see, the wires are back. I tried to be, I'm not going to name the company because they do keep me good. But <laughs> the wireless weren't working and it all went to pot. But we are back. We are here to enjoy. And it is the entertainment corner. So hopefully that was a bit of entertainment for you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll work with that one. Great so, to okay. see Great to see Trinidad. Always, always. He is such a talent. He is such a talent. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's great. And I love the way it all came together. Sadly, I didn't hear how it came about, but I will catch it on the replay. Yeah, yeah. Plugging it there. But no, always great stuff. So as much as it is an entertainment corner, we do have a few sad moments of obituaries. Um, Rick yeah. Clark mentioned the closest one to me, not that there are many losses around the world. And, you know, sympathy to Annette. Ruddy, Rudolph Fuhrer, and that was a really hard one for myself as well. But in the entertainment industry, there have been a couple of names that have actually passed. Um, Tony Allen, a drummer who's also part of... Um, he was part of the Afrobeat movement, if you would, the early stages. You also have the elements of R&B. He was really involved in all forms of music and entertainment. So R.I.P. to him. Um, Actually, we mentioned that, he was renowned. They even classed him as the number one drummer in the world. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. There you go. No, a very a great talent who is yeah. definitely definitely going to be missed yeah. and out uh, you know one to be missed. We did mention we've also got Andre Hyrule, who was the producer and owner of Uptown Records. So oh. P Diddy, um, Mary J Blige, people like that. All of those music, those great R and B sounds from the nineties. Apparently, he, it, it's not confirmed yet, but it is suspected to be COVID that had taken him mysteriously a couple of days ago so that was one that came out at the top of the show we mentioned um little richard and also i don't know if you heard pam millie brown passed away recently due to a stroke oh, oh, at 75 blessings oh dear. she did indeed so, i believe this is your moment um to, to what can i say we've, we've had a great one it, yeah. it's been it's been there a few technical hitches but we work on it but again guys it has been an absolute pleasure do, do you know what? I, I really don't want to leave here because I did want to um, do, say something very quickly because we couldn't get the uh, representative of the carnival. But I just want to say the statement on behalf of Notting Hill Carnival. Um, obviously, that it has to be, it had to um, 
they had to cancel it this year. Um, reading out the statement, like all events around the world, the COVID-19 pandemic has meant that Nottingham Hill Carnival has faced many challenges this year. After lengthy consultations with our strategic partners and our advisory council, the board has taken the decision that this year's carnival will not take place on the streets of Notting Hill, Carn Notting Hill as it has done so for over 50 years. This will also mean that Panorama, the annual steel band competition, will not take place. Notting Hill Carnival has founded um, to bring people together during trying times and we intend to continue that legacy. We're working towards an alternate alternate NHSC 2020 and we hope we'll bring the carnival spirit to people from the safety of their homes and make them feel connected and engaged. This has not been an easy decision to make but the reality of the COVID-19 pandemic and the way in which it has unfolded means that this is the only safe option. Everyone's health has to come first. That's a statement from Notting Hill Carnival and we have it there. Right. Indeed. Um, to, this is this is a, this is unprecedented. I'm, I hate that word though. Um, it's been used too much but I've just said it. Um, we actually have um, Dominic uh, Fedi, chairman of the tourism office of St. Lucia, just been told he's actually um, on the line to speak to us. There's going to be an address by the Prime Minister, uh, Alan Chastanay, this evening, um, addressing the nation about the lockdown. And I believe I have uh, Mr. Dominic um, Fedi on the line. Sir, can you hear right. me? Uh, Mr. Fedi, can you see me? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I absolutely can. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine. How are you? Are we long time, long time. Yes, yes, yes. Good to see you again. And you too, sir. You too. Thank you ever so much. I know you have a very busy schedule. Um, we know an important event is going to happen later on in the island, but uh, the uh, Prime Minister, Alan Chastanay, is going to address the nation in regards to the lockdown. Um, we would hope that we could get a link that our uh, people over here could actually tune in at that time of the address. But thank you, sir, for, for coming through to us. I do have a few questions and I'm going to kick off with this first one. How has St. Lucia uh, been coping and dealing with the COVID-19 crisis? Um, I think we've been really uh, good. I think if I must say uh, the World Health Organization uh, just a few days ago um, would have said that we are among only two countries in the world to have been uh, corona free. So we've had at the time 15 recorded cases, two of which were British uh, um, tourists on island. And um, we've repatriated them. And in addition to that, uh, all of our cases uh, have recovered except for two. So we've only got two positive cases on island. So uh, we're really, really thrilled. And I think that that has boasted a lot of confidence in a lot of the people on island in our health capacity and in the skills and um, dexterity in the Ministry of Health. Yeah, I was going to say that next, sort of coming on to that, uh, how has the pandemic uh, impacted on the country's economy when we think about tourism, etc.? Well, it's been absolutely devastating. As we watch um, the world economy, it makes us even more nervous. As you know, St. Lucia's economy is dependent on tourism and there's a complete lockdown. Uh, we've got zero tourists on island. All the restaurants, all the hotels are closed, all the um, shops are closed. And so um, we're now focusing on, you know, a very responsible reopening of the economy so that we can put our people back to work. But at the same time, ensure that we uh, optimize and to prioritize the uh, public health uh, situation on Ireland so that a lot of our people uh, can remain safe and uh, we can at the same time create livelihoods for them. Yeah, and I mean, you just said it there, tourism is at a standstill. Um, the country's been locked down for weeks now. Um, how do you plan to come out of the crisis? I know I've, I said earlier that the prime minister is going to address the, the country. Is it going to be staggered? Do you think it's going to be a, a kind of like a, a tier uh, initiative going on slowly, slowly? Yeah, but it's certainly a phased approach. We've opened certain aspects of the economy, so the construct construction sector is reopened. Uh, the uh, the government services and uh, doctors' offices and um, a whole host of others. Um, some of our supermarkets have stayed open throughout because they're essential services, home and convenience stores. So there's a gradual reopening of our economy with a view to uh, striking a balance between uh, taking care of this pandemic, which we have done so successfully, but at the same time to ensure that uh, it doesn't bankrupt the country. Um, from the economic standpoint, we have seen um, an absolute devastation, like I've said, 
uh, the government revenues have fallen by about 70 percent, which really has become a real problem for small countries, not just in St. Lucia, but in the Caribbean. And now um, it is uh, becoming extremely difficult to run government because of the revenue losses which we have endured uh, in the past uh, months. I mean, this is absolutely fluid. We see that uh, big corporations all over the world uh, um, are having tremendous difficulty. And the same applies here in St. Lucia, where um, our companies are a bit smaller in terms of size and scale, but uh, they too are feeling uh, the effects of this pandemic, which really has been nothing but a devastation so far economically. Yeah, of course, of course. But, you know, we, we talk about how St. Lucia, no deaths, you're saying it up literally 15, 6, 17, if you will, but how do you attribute this, that success in keeping uh, the records down to that level, and no deaths at all, compared to the rest of the world? What, did, what is it that you did? I think that we, we shut down pretty early. Um, I think there are three things, you know, social distancing, um, uh, testing, very important from very um, early on. And, um, and so if you go into castries now, they're going to be nine and a half out of every 10 individuals you see will be wearing a mask because we've all taken this on board that this is a serious pandemic, that this is a health crisis. And um, regular updates, daily updates, uh, a lot of health information, um, giving the Ministry of Health a lot of support. So we had a very all hands on deck situation where every department uh, in the government was playing a role in helping the Ministry of Health in some way to fight the pandemic uh, that we were facing at this uh, present time. And so our team really just, we just followed the, the global rules and we did so without complaining. And um, there was a week where we had a 24 hour lockdown where no one went nowhere, no supermarket, nothing was open. Everyone just stayed at home. And I think that that played a significant role in, in what we're doing. So I think we've got to be, um, we've got to take some short term pain if we don't do the shutdown right, if we don't do all the things that are necessary um, with coronavirus right, we're going to go through it much longer um, than is required. It sounds to me that he's saying what you're saying. Perhaps um, Prime Minister uh, Arachester will not be... Okay, I, I can't hear you. I'm going to have to uh, take a minute to uh, come back in because I okay. can't hear you now. A call all came right. in. Do that, sir. Because yeah, just give me one minute. No problem. Okay. Um, We've okay. got Dominic back. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Dominic, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Absolutely. Loud and clear. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to say that last bit when you, you, you spoke there. It, I, I got a hint from that, that uh, in, in his address today, it, it doesn't sound as if uh, Prime Minister uh, Alan Chastney is going to really give much, only a limited amount of, 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 of uh, lifting of restrictions. No, we're going to go back now into um, implementing key sectors like tourism, as scary as that sounds. But what I think COVID has done in the same way that 9-11 has done, it is going to change the way that we travel um, for the rest of our lives. And so what St. Lucia has been doing is to be very proactive. And we ask ourselves, even while we were in the lockdown, we were meeting in the cabinet and with the health officials to say, OK, there is stage one, there is stage two, there is stage three in the public health fight. But we created a new, uh, a new stage called stage four. And we said, what is stage four going to look like for our hotels? So it means that, therefore, if someone is leaving Gatwick Airport to come to St. Lucia, um, we're going to require them to have a rapid test. Now, we know with the rapid test, it is not completely reliable. And so, therefore, you come through our airports, your temperatures are going to have to be checked. And if there is anyone that has a fever that resembles anything uh, like a symptom related to coronavirus. We're going to isolate you. We're going to quarantine you in your hotel. And we're going to monitor you until we can test you. Uh, it will require 24 hours um, in terms of isolation so that we can do a proper test to ensure that you are negative. Um, and I think we've got to now make sure all of the hotel employees, in the same way you run a hospital, that they are wearing PPE supplies, that the place is properly sanitized, that people are socially distanced, that we don't do any buffets, that we 
um, ensure that we have limited uh, excursions. We don't want people to go into um, clusters of our towns and villages, but rather to go visit in an orderly, organized, managed manner to go visit some of our sites and attractions and some of the beauty of our country. Uh, but I think that the new reality of COVID and how tourism is going to work, uh, it is going to change forever. Um, a lot of the airlines we're talking to have already agreed with us on the American side that they are going to have no middle seating. So you're going to go, you're going to have seats on the windows and also in the aisle. Unless a family is traveling, of course, then you can put them together. And these are a lot of the uh, procedures that we have just thrashed out in order to make our country safe for the workers of St. Lucia, for the tourists that are coming from all of our major source markets, and as well um, in the best interest of this global pandemic, which is affecting all of us, whether we are a small country, whether we are a big country like the United Kingdom. And so what we've got to make sure is um, we continue sharing information, learn from each other, and, and work in the best interest of each other. Yeah. And that's what part and parcel of it is, that every country is looking at the second peak, if you will, that if you, if you lift too many restrictions, that may happen. And so this is what St. Lucia obviously is thinking about rather seriously. Rather seriously, but it has to be managed. It has to be highly regulated. Um, we were on a call with our hoteliers yesterday and we've indicated to them that what you know tourism to be like uh, just say goodbye to that because life has changed and there's a new normal in tourism and the, the SOPs are going to have to be extremely stringent um, in the best interest of everyone. So you've got to make sure that when you say lockdown, you are locked down. Um, you know, I, I saw an interview uh, with some of the people from some of the uh, eastern, uh, south, a southeast Asian countries. And they were asked, um, why hasn't um, the West uh, been so successful in containing this virus as places like Taiwan and Singapore and Hong Kong has been? And they said, listen, when, when you say lockdown, you must mean lockdown. It cannot be that you're locked down and people are out in the parks. It cannot be locked down and people are out and about in the streets. It cannot be, you're a lockdown, you're a lockdown. Do it properly for two weeks. And then everyone can move on with life. I mean, so, you can take inspiration from how the Chinese have just come out of this. Yeah. You've just got to be lay the gauntlet down. This is what it is. If we don't follow the rules, all of us will die. And that is simply it. There's no if, buts, maybes. And we have just had a very, very, very um, strong and draconian uh, uh, measure on it. Uh, we've... Um, if you know the island well, we've actually put checkpoints and zones. Um, we've put curfews in place. The police patrols are there. And if there are people who are found in the streets that are not supposed to be there, you know what? You're arrested. You've just broken the law. Um, the first thing we did is that we uh, declared a national emergency. And that national emergency, what it did, it gave the government certain powers in order to uh, put curfews in place, um, at, at a whim, and to ensure that uh, other uh, legal uh, things that you need to do, that that is in place from very early on. So unless you social distance, unless you test, it is difficult to know what you're dealing with. Sensitize, sensitize, social distance, test, 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 and you're going to win this fight. Well, St. Lucia certainly winning the fight. And I, I was wondering, because you have been to the UK several times, and I know you're keeping up to date with what's happening in the UK. And when I hear you say that, when you say lockdown, it shouldn't be lockdown, obviously, uh, you know, so we have a semi-lockdown. Um, what, what, you know, what, what do you think of that, you know, the government of St. Lucia, when you look at the UK and how we've dealt with it? Well, you know, it's, 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 it's very straightforward. A lockdown is like being in love. Is, are you in love or are you not in love? It's yes or no. It can't be semi or, or, or partial. Um, you've got to um, enforce it. And I know cultures are different. And what governments uh, can do in various countries, it might be harder to do in other countries. Um, I know that the Asian countries have a history of, uh, of subjugation. Uh, and what their governments can do 
governments in the West uh, may find difficult. So I think that um, we've got to cooperate as well as um, citizens to ensure that we make the enforcement right. Um, you know, you're not going to die by not going to the coffee shop for a couple of weeks. You know, you're not going to die if you don't go to the theater. You're not going to die if you don't go to the mall. A lot of the things that we have refused to stay away from um, are not necessities in life, you know. Once there's food at home and your family as well, I think that that's all that's important for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And you've got to just be very simple and matter-of-factly about this. And I think that this is what we've done. Um, did we get political pressure? Yes, we absolutely did. But a lot of those people who... Uh, you know, originally criticized the shutdowns or the lockdowns and said that you were too draconian. Uh, you know, when the results came out, you know, you just shut them off. There you are. There you are. My last question. I mean, this is a brief because I've only been uh, told this. I just literally got some information about this. But I understand that um, uh, Prime Minister um, Alan Chastity has been appointed as the Administrator for Border Control across the Caribbean. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're taking a regional approach as it relates to how we open tourism back up. Um, several countries have got several dates. I chair the Caribbean Tourism Organization as well, as St. Lucia's Minister of Tourism. Um, and so we are working uh, very assiduously uh, to ensure that we have a regional approach to um, tourism. We're going to focus on the accommodation sector first. We are nowhere ready for cruise ships. That's a whole different ballgame. Uh, and that's a whole different management and scenario. But what we're going to do is um, we're going to have um, very, very small amounts of tourists on each destination that we can manage. Um, luckily for us, our tourism is not city-based. It is more on peninsulas and enclaves. And so hotels are like communities that are socially distanced naturally. And um, we are going to be able to control uh, those situations. We've put in a number of protocols. Uh, one, to try to make it easy for the guests, but um, we've made it clear to all of our stakeholders that what travel is, don't expect it to be uh, pre-COVID. It's a new thing. You know, in the same way that before 9-11, you um, didn't have to take your shoes off. You didn't have to go through these machines that scan your entire body. Uh, you didn't have to take off your belt. You but now COVID is going to cause you traveling to, to do some things. And I think that um, it's important that we all do that to, to keep each other safe. I think the risk, alternatively, is, um, is too, too great. Um, but back to the question on the prime minister, he has been a superb leader in leading the country through this. Um, he's made a lot of time and addressed the nation at every point. Um, our cabinet, for example, have been virtual. Uh, or socially distance. Our parliament, for example, um, has been uh, reduced in terms of the number of people who have been able to um, sit in the, the chamber at any given time uh, when we go there to make a specific law. Uh, and, you know, we've just had to change life. You know, we've, supermarkets have had to put in protocols. Uh, if you don't have those protocols and you're not passed by the public health agency, you just don't open. Simple. Um, if you violate the protocols, we shut you down. Um, we've had a situation where a call center and a few other businesses were shut down because they didn't follow the protocols. And um, we've just been very uh, strict and matter-of-factly about it. We've got check police checkpoints all over the island uh, to make sure that people are staying in their zones. We've zoned the country. And... Uh, we've said all you need right now, you need a bank, you need a supermarket, and you need a petrol station. That's it. And, you know, once we zone the country, and you can get those things in your area, you don't need to be going in different parts of the country that you don't need to be. And, 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 and these are some of the things that we have done um, in ensuring that we, we keep the country safe. But in doing so, what you do is you curtail access for vulnerable people to access supermarkets in a lockdown and access food. So the government has had to also step in to provide care for those individuals. Um, our hospitals have been upgraded. Uh, we, luckily for St. Lucia, we had a new hospital, um, a state-of-the-art hospital, which is called the European Union uh, Hospital 
uh, which was a, a, a grant we got from the European Union. And we were able to open the facility, which had a, a very positive impact on our healthcare capacity. In addition to that, our old general hospital and the previous general hospital, uh, we have just redesigned it with the World Bank um, to become a respiratory hospital. And many St. Lucians who are watching might know it as the uh, Victoria Hospital. And that hospital is where we take positive patients into uh, care. Uh, the other thing is that we've been very strict in quarantine. So um, with our hotels being closed, we've used a lot of the hotel facilities as uh, quarantine where uh, at present we have about uh, 300 cruise ship workers who have returned from the United States, which has now become the global epicenter for this virus. Mm -hmm. And um, we said that you can't go back into community unless you have been medically managed and monitored for 14 days. And so once you do that and you're strict in the quarantine, uh, then you're absolutely fine. So you could be the prime minister, you could be a government minister. Once you're out, you have to be quarantined. And we've had to set an example um, in, in various cases. I mean, I've been into a petrol station once uh, in the convenience store and I forgot my mask in the car and you should see uh, how people went at me and I had to go get my mask back in the car. So there's that there's that level of sensitation that none of us are getting off the hook here now, you know, yeah. regardless of who you are, Absolutely. wear your mask. We're going to do this well. We're going to do this right. Um, and if you, if minister, we're very sorry. If you don't put your mask on, you just can't come in. Yeah. And I'm just so proud of the way that uh, St. Lucians have behaved. I think that um, it has brought the best out of them. Absolutely. I was so proud, you know, um, in, you know, sometimes as, as small countries, you don't get to be uh, a world leader in too many things. And, you know, I was very, very proud to see when the World Health Organization named two small countries, St. Lucia and St. Barthes, as the two countries that were in the green. Uh, because for an entire week, we had zero positive cases. Yes. Um, we have a situation where neighboring Martinique, because of their, their being like a European territory, um, they have had a lot of cases there. And we do have some of our nationals who have been living there. and they have come through the back door. Oh, oh okay. Oh, very good there, is it? Um, I think we've... Avoid the quarantine. Yes, yes. yes. Be stringent um, and to lay the gunlet down and to lay the law down. Yeah, of course. Well, this is why St. Lucia is a success story. Um, you've done it right. You've done it completely right. At this point, I have to say to you, thank you ever so much, Dominic Fedi, uh, um, Minister of Tourism of St. Lucia. Thank you ever so much for talking to us and sparing the time um, to speak to us today. Thank you, sir. And do take very good care of yourself. Okay. Okay. Wow. I, yeah, that was some really, really interesting news. I'm just seeing the time. We are over like nobody's business. Ow. So I just want to say thank you so much. Two hours have flown by quicker than I could ever imagine. It's yeah. great for Lifestyle to be back. Uh -huh. Thank you to everyone who's joined us on Facebook, YouTube, all the networks. Thank you to Media Net Live for promoting this in such a way. Thank you, Pam. It's been great to see you again. Um, I just want to, my last message is happy International Mother's Day. Over in the UK, we had it earlier in March, I believe. That's the one. But I've got aunties, I've got family all over the world, and there are ladies all over the world who deserve it. So I'm just putting a big, huge international happy Mother's Day out to you all. Exactly. Not to forget that you can watch this show. Any friends or family that have missed um, today's show here, um, they can watch it again on Ben TV Sky Platform 458 from 10 till 12 noon. And that's going to be on the 15th. And that is on Friday, the 15th from 10 a.m. till 12 noon. And that is Sky 458. Um, Spread the word. Tell a friend to tell a friend. It's been an amazing, it's been an amazing experience. But Anthony and I will have to reiterate this. And every every time we end this show, we, we got to say these words. Stay safe. Stay indeed, strong. Indeed. Save life. Indeed. And as you just saw from the previous minister, keep the distance. As much as it's tempting, it's worth the wait. Good things come to those who wait. Keep your distance. You can have that hug when the yeah. time is right. Yeah. Until just, then, just do what we're doing. Two different oh, screens. There you go. Virtual, oh, virtual hug. There you go. <laughs> Blessings to you all, and, and we're back again next week, same time. 
nästa gång. See ya. Mm.